Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey. 2014 was a crazy year in regard of comics for me. I bought lots and lots of comics and if you could see beside me and behind me, here are big stacks of comics waiting for me to show you. So at one top 10 alone like I did last year won't do the trick this time. I will do four top tens with different themes. This time it will be my 10 favorite horror comic books from 2014. In the next panelogy I'll talk about my favorite superhero comic books. And after that it's um, the favorite science fiction books. And the last panelogy with this um, top tens will be about love, life, and crime, and all the rest. So, um, yeah, starting today with my favorite horror comics. Um, Hellblazer isn't included in the top 10. Not because uh, it's, uh, it contains, these traits contain old stories in a new package. Um, that's okay, that's fine for me. Um, I will include in these top tens um, definitely uh, old stories that came out in new formats. But I, uh, I've i just read um, volume two. Also not included in my top ten is this fine book, The Heart of the Beast, a love story published by Dynamite, containing an early story drawn by Sean Phillips. It's a must, I think, for fans of Sean Phillips, but you see it in many panels, too many panels, I must say, that he is not up to his level of artistry uh, he's in. Uh, he's shown in his recent works, although he um, used lots of photo references uh, for his paintings. Some facial expressions are a bit off and not always recognizable. Um, the story is a bit clumsy too. Uses long passages of text. That being said, you get some amazing panels of Sean Phillips where he shows already his talent, like this lady in the bed. Oh, okay, what's so horror-y about it? Uh, it's a Frankenstein story told in a new way. So, now to my top 10. Here's position 10. Um, the Strain. I've already done uh, an epi episode about this book. It was uh, Penelogy 39. So if you are interested in Guillermo del Toro, horror written by David Lepham, um, drawn by Mike Huddleston with crazy covers by E.M. Gist, um, maybe watch Penelogy number 39. Number nine, uh, small, nice book um, from Gilbert Hernandez, Fatima the Blood Spinners, about this lady here killing zombies like there's no tomorrow. Good old fashioned trash in black and white. Lots of splattering and blood and gore that takes itself not too seriously. If you like this stuff, this kind of thing, you won't be disappointed. But don't expect a too complicated, too intelligent, too highbrow story. It's not. Just simple, but awesome horror stuff.
coming in on place eight, another book. I've already talked about it in um, a Penology episode number 47. Crawl Space, written by Rick Remender, drawn by Kieran Dwyer, Tony Moore, Francesco Francavilla, Saul Good Sam, Seth Peck, and others. Um, pick tome with many different horror stories um, held together by the storytelling talent that is Rick Remender. Some stories I liked more than others, but overall pretty good fun. This is Francesco Francavilla. And like I told you back then, alone this story is worth this book. Place number seven is Mike Mignola's Hellboy Weird Tales. Um, regular library edition didn't came uh, didn't come out this year, so I have to stick with Weird Tales. Um, and an anthology with stories done by different artists and written by other writers and then Mike Mignola. You have the whole kaleidoscope of uh, cartoony stuff, more serious stuff, beautiful uh, abstract renderings of Hellboy, um, short episodes with the usual, more usual Hellboy stories and so on and so on. Very f uh, very entertaining, very good for every Hellboy fan a must have. Oh here, Jill Thompson with uh, watercolor style and a nice little romantic interlude for Hellboy. Um, yeah, nice little book. Although, if you are not reading Hellboy, please start with the library editions or uh, BPRD stuff. On position six, a German uh, translation from a French original, Prophet, from French artist Mathieu Lofre. This is volume four in European album format. I pondered a bit if I should show you this because hmm, I think it's hard, if not impossible, to get in America or so. But anyway, it's a pretty fascinating story about demons rising from hell. Um, Raining the earth after an apocalypse um, and makes quite a good use of the big format for great splash panels. Part three came out three uh, four years ago, so this is a bit of um, happening cover art by the same artist. Mathieu Lofre, who does the interior art, although it's uh, different looking because it's painted. The covers alone are worth place six in my top ten, I think, and my favorite cover here. This one with the spooky lady here. Coming in on position 5 is The Walking Dead, Omnibus number 5. I've already shown you my other four Omnibuy, Walking Dead Omnibuy, in Penelogy number 19. 
so you can watch this one. Um, I mean, you can always argue that the story is maybe not the most original one, that Charlie Adlard is more maybe not the best artist, but I always find myself reading the stuff um, from start to finish uh, in the moment I, I can get it. Every uh, free minute I devote to uh, my Walking Dead book and yeah, I think it this says oh, everything about this world that is compelling uh, like uh, no other I think in the comic world. So another comic world I find really compelling is the one of Mike Mignola and one part of it is the world of Baltimore and Chapel of Bones part four I guess yes part four was really a stunning one Chapel of Bones somehow these books grow on me uh, at first, the first books I thought, mm, this is not after World War One Europe. Okay, World War One Europe was cancelled in this alternate uh, universe because to the zombie plague, zombie vampire plague uh, here, and this vampire hunter develops some interesting new f um, facets. In this book here and also the art by Ben Steinbeck is brilliant another book that's maybe hard to get um, uh, outside of Europe is this book Cromwell Stone Gesamtausgabe I showed this in Penelogy 27 Classic H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe um, inspired stuff in black and white. Gorgeous. If you have a chance to get it, get it. Even if it's in German, <laughs> I think. You can dwell over the these crazy panels and so just two books to go now on place two Edgar and Poe stories Spirits of the Dead drawn by Richard Corbin who has a lifelong obsession, at least an um, artist's life, long obsession with uh, Edgar Allan Poe. And some stories here uh, he did at least for a second time, I think. These modern versions of Poe stories are incredible although it takes a bit time to adjust to his um, computer coloring that mimics his old airbrush technique that you may know from his old uh, heavy metal comics. But the way he tries and approaches this different these different stories uh, is somehow very original and he uh, tries to avoid cliches cliche storytelling and that can't be a uh, said always about his old um, stories so maybe I should do a Panology about oh uh, surely I will do a panology about Richard Corbin 
as well. So silver medal in regard of horror comic books from 2014, Spirits of the Dead. Get it? It's great. And ta-da! The best horror trade that came out in 2014, to my opinion, is this one, Revival, Volume 2 by Tim Seeley, written by Tim Seeley and drawn by Mike Norton, with stunning covers by Jenny Frison. Uh, fantastic book, put out by Image. This time you get 12 issues of um, Revival Goodness plus uh, the uh, special editions of Chew and Revival, this crossover event. The spooky covers uh, from Jenny Frison alone are worth the money, uh, in my opinion. The interior art of Mike Norton can't hold this level, but the writing of um, Tim Seeley overcompensate this with crazy ideas. The small town in Wisconsin gets really, should I say it, alive with all these revivers that um, act somehow like normal people, somehow they don't. And the things uh, Tim Seeley let Mike Norton do with eyeballs and teeth, they keep your tooth nails cro um, curled, I tell ya. Blood and gore, crazy ideas that spooky kids, ghosts, what else do you want from a good horror comic? Fantastic stuff. So, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.